Hi there, this is Donnie from the Makersphere, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create 3D models for your own custom neon signs. The first step is to open Fusion 360 and immediately save your project. Once you've done that, click on the Insert button and select the Canvas option. This is where you'll select the image you want to turn into a neon sign. In the dialog box, click on the Insert from My Computer button and locate your image. On the top right corner of Fusion 360, you'll see the orientation cube, which will tell you what plane you're currently looking at. When inserting your image, you want to make sure you select the front plane. Once the image has been inserted, go ahead and grab the top right corner of the image and stretch it out so it's easier to work with. And you'll also notice it's probably mirrored horizontally, so go ahead and hit the horizontal flip button to get it correct. Orient your image to the front plane and go ahead and expand the canvases on the left panel and right click on your image to select calibrate. Here is where you're going to size your image accordingly for your 3D printer's bed. So for example, I'm using a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and I want to make my model 220 millimeters tall. This will allow the model to easily sit on my bed and print without issue. So make sure to do the same for your printer and your specifications. Once again, make sure the calibration cube is showing the front plane and click the Create Sketch button on the top right of the toolbar. And then you'll see a square pop up which just wants to confirm that you're on the front plane. So go ahead and click that and you'll have yourself a new sketch. I like to name all my sketches so I know exactly what I'm working on. And for this particular sketch, I'm going to be working on the letter M portion of the image. To actually draw your sketch, you're going to be using the tools in the top left of the toolbar. For the letter M, I'll be using the straight line tool and the curve line tool. To start this sketch, I'll select the straight line tool and click on the bottom left hand corner and go all the way up to right before where the curve starts and click again. Then I'll switch to the curve line tool and begin to trace out the curve here. When switching between tools, make sure you start with the new tool on the last point the old tool ended with so you can continue the drawing and keep it all connected. If you mess up placing a point like I just did, don't worry, uh, just hit Ctrl Z to undo that last point and go ahead and replace it. Again here I'm going from the curve line tool to now the straight line tool. So I'll make sure that I click on the last point the curve line tool made to begin with my straight line. And then same thing here except going from the straight line tool to the curve line tool just to continue on. And for the rest of this I'm going to speed this up and finish off the M sketch. Bouncing between the straight line tool and the curve line tool as needed. And now the M sketch is done. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show and hide the logo a few times so you can see the actual sketch. The next step is going to be using the offset tool. And what this is going to do is we're going to create offset lines based on our original sketch line. So go ahead and click the offset and then click on your original sketch line. And the first number we want to enter is going to be four millimeters. Click the offset tool again and then click your original sketch line. And this time we're going to make the offset line negative four millimeters. Once again, click the offset tool and again, click the original sketch line and create a three millimeter offset. Then we'll create a negative three millimeter offset followed by a 1.5 millimeter offset and finally a negative 1.5 millimeter offset. Now the M portion sketch is finished and we're going to click the finish sketch button and then go to the top left and under the create menu hit extrude or alternatively you can hit E on your keyboard and this is where we're going to actually give our sketch three-dimensional properties and make it a, an actual model. Once you have selected extrude go ahead and select the two outermost sections of your model and we want to make it extrude negative 17 millimeters.
click on the eyeball icon next to your sketch and make sure your sketch is visible and then go to create extrude again and then select the next two sections and for this we're going to make them negative five millimeters. Once again, make sure your sketch is visible and go to create and extrude and then select the last two sections. And for this one, we want to make it extrude negative 0.5 millimeters. Go ahead and disable the sketch's eyeball icon so the sketch is no longer visible and you should be left with the channels for wires and the LEDs to sit into. And it should look similar to how they look in the video. Now we want to make our image visible again and double check our calibration cube that we're looking at the front plane and go ahead and create another sketch. For this example, this next sketch is going to be the sphere portion. For this portion of the sketch, I'm going to be using the circle tool and once the circle is made I'm going to actually move it down and right a little bit just so it doesn't clash with the existing M portion of the neon sign. Now it's time to create the spheres offset lines like we did before. So go ahead and follow that same process and do 4 millimeters, negative 4 millimeters, 3 millimeters, negative 3 millimeters, 1.5 millimeters, and negative 1.5 millimeters. After clicking the finish sketch button, we'll go to the create and then extrude again and select the two outermost sections and again put negative 17 millimeters. Just like before, we'll select the next two sections for extruding and set them to negative 5 millimeters and then the final two sections to extrude will set to negative 0.5 millimeters. The next step is going to be taking both of these models and combining them into a single model. So using the top right calibration cube, position yourself on the back plane and then click the new sketch button. I named this sketch connection since we'll be using this sketch to connect both models together and at the same time I renamed the body we just created to sphere just so everything is easily visible and understandable. From here, we want to go to the Create menu and scroll down to the Project slash Include option and choose the Project selection. Alternatively, you can press P on your keyboard. Once Project has been selected, you want to go ahead and click on both of your models so they turn blue, and then on the Project panel, go ahead and click OK. Now we want to take the Line tool and draw a couple lines to combine these two and what we'll be left with is the inside portion that we can then extrude to actually do the combining of the parts. If you're having the issue that I'm having right now where it seems like the line doesn't want to end but instead wants to continue on, go ahead and just hit the escape key and that'll actually end the line. Now that the lines have been drawn, go ahead and hit the finish sketch button and then again go to create and extrude and select the inside portion that we just created and we want to extrude this negative eight millimeters.
After extruding that part, we'll have created a little bridge between the two models, combining them into one with that 8mm tall section. The next step is to create a hole for all the wires to come out of, and for this hole I usually like to make it 10 millimeters just so there's enough room for everything to fit. After that hole's been created, we're going to create another hole between the two sections we just combined through the bridge. This will allow the wires from that one section to pass through to the other and ultimately go out the termination hole we just finished creating. If you remember the bridge we just created, we made it 8mm tall, so for this hole we want it to be a 5mm hole so that it can sit in between that 8mm bridge and not poke out through the top or the bottom. It can be a little difficult to position this, so just take your time and try and get it right, and if you mess up, you can control Z and do it again. Similar to what we did with the connection sketch, we want to create another sketch and call it hangers to create mounting holes for if you want to hang this on the wall. This is optional, but if you do plan to hang it on the wall, you'll need some way to keep it up there. So go ahead and use the calibration cube on the top right and position yourself on the back plane and create a new sketch. Once again, we're going to use the project tool. So you can either hit P on your keyboard or go to create and then down to project include and then project. At this point you should only have one model since we've combined everything, so go ahead and select that one model for the projection and then hit OK on the project box. For my particular model, the best hanging points are going to be in the two curved areas of the M, so what I'm going to do is take the line tool and just draw a straight line across in both sections to create areas that we can extrude and then create holes for mounting. Again, if you have the line issue where it wants to continue rather than end, go ahead and hit escape. It takes me a little bit to figure it out, but I get there. Go ahead and click the finish sketch button, and just like before, we want to extrude these parts, or a single part if you only have one. So go ahead and hit create and extrude, or hit E on your keyboard, and however many sections you have, highlight all of them by clicking them, and then we want to extrude those negative five. The last step will be adding holes to however many sections you created just now. In my case I have two, so I'll add two 5mm holes, one to each side, and the design will be done and we can export the STL. To do that, go to File and Export, and then in the Export dialog box, make sure you select the STL File option and then name your file and choose where it goes and then we can load this up in your slicer of choice. For me that's Bamboo Studio. Be sure to check the description. I've added more information and put a link with a list of all the supplies you'll need along with instructions for how to install the LEDs using one of my custom neon sign shells. Thank you for watching. I hope the video helped you and you're able to create your own neon signs. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you make anything cool, feel free to share it. I would love to see them. Have a good day.